in this video we're going to focus on how we can create a color and you can see here where the segment where the segment instantly changed into a different color here and this is independent of value so you could just set this up and you can control where you would like to show this so let's start to explore how we can give this nice color change in a line chart in this video we're going to answer one of the viewers question which is how to change the line color of the line segments in a line chart in chart yes. and this question came from one of my other videos about uh, how to assign colors in a line chart based on the values in chart yes, which is a very interesting topic and if you scroll down here you can see this question came from a uh, Sergio MNG so a special thank you to Sergio for asking the question and this is what Sergio asked uh, thank you for the video could you tell me how to change the color of some specific segments I mean regardless of their value let's say I want I need to change the color of the last three segments I believe this should be easier than this but I haven't been able to figure out all right so let's start to explore how to do this because it is sadly enough not that easy but it's still quite doable so let's start to work with this because what we really need to do here is basically play with the gradient effect except instead of changing the the color gra gradually with the gradient effect we want to change the color instantly anyway let's start and show you exactly how so first of all we need to get the default code on charges 3com getting started so if we scroll down here we're going to grab here the default code and if you want to understand what this code does make sure you watch this video that explains the JavaScript of the code so I'm going to put it in here once we paste that all in there I'm going to cut out this put it in there there we are save and there we are so once we have this I want to convert this eventually into a line chart so in here all I need to do here is indicate here the line chart save and then what I want to do here the border width can be removed let's say here tension and this tension will be tension of 0 0.4 so we get the nice elastic design so I save this and refresh alright so we have this and now final item what I want to do here indicate fill to put in a background color so fill equals true by default it is set on false so refresh there we are so now we have this here and you can see here the background color is just a single color even though we have here multiple colors so charges doesn't grab this the only thing what it recognizes the background colors is the dot radius or the point radius here so that's a pity but that's all right we're going to work on this now so what we need to do is we need to play around and what I'm going to do now is basically the following first of all uh, let's grab here the background color what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this I need to put in here a new way to play around with the background color so what I have to do here is to create a function that function will eventually allow us to start working with gradient effects and from there on we can easily pick it up and change colors so what we're going to do here is the following we're going to say here color and we're putting here a arrow function expression which is basically in another word for function because we're going to make a callback function here and uh, what we can do here sorry this should be not uh, color should be context because this will be eventually important for the following here because what we're going to do here is a callback but I want to say here constant which is the chart and this chart will be equal context dot chart so what we're going to do here now is basically getting the chart variable if I do here console log and you see here context if I save that refresh open up developer tab let's see if that works all right we forgot a comma here probably save that refresh there you are so now we get a lot of information here we get all of this information and what I basically need to do is well it doesn't show you really clearly but what I need to do is you jump one level back into this specific here item here so if I save that here refresh we get all these features here so what we really did was jump one level back here to grab all the features and all these features now we can start working on what we call a object destructuring because what I need to do eventually is the following so you might be confused what's going on here I need to get the coordinates of our chart area our scales uh, and basically in this case our X and Y skills are important and we need to have the chart area and the chart area refers to these here because we need to know what are the pixel coordinates of every single item so what we're going to do here is the following 
we're going to say here this. So we say here constant. And this constant will be an object destructuring. And an object destructuring is basically saying we get an object, we want to split it out and grab only the individual items from it. So what we need here is the following. I need to get the CTX, which is the context. And if I'm not mistaken, you should see them here as well. The CTX, what I need to know as well is the chart area, which we have here. And what we need here is the scales as well. So I want to grab only those. So we say CTX, chart, area with capital A, and scales. So once I have this, I say this equals chart, indicating that this equals that here which is basically this and this here is our console log of this here. So basically just referring back to this information here so we have all of these data points or uh, pixel coordinates. That's why we need this. So the next thing what I need to know here is, well, the first thing what I want to do is, because this is a very common thing, if you load this, usually the first few will have no values or sometimes it just doesn't work. And the reason why is that it's loading, it's drawing the item. And then after that, that's why we have so many times, after that it will gradually start to do something. So what I want to make sure is that if in the beginning, the first one, maybe it's undefined because it's still calculating, I want to make sure we just keep on going and it doesn't break. Because if, it, uh, if we don't indicate that, it will break and then it will stop the function and it gives an error. So I want to avoid that error. So what we're going to do here is the following. We're going to say if there is no chart area in that case i want to just say only here return null so don't return or return basically nothing very simple or just a null value so it's just a blank value or null value it has a certain value but basically indicating nothing so once we have this then what we can do here because this will load usually one of one or two times. Usually it's the first two that tend to have an error or tend to have no things. Then what we want to do here now is we can say here return. Once it did that, then you say return get gradient. I'm going to make this function. This will be a function. And this function will do one thing here. We want to grab here these arguments here or these parameters put in here. Or the arguments, that's probably the arguments, that's the right term. These are the arguments because these have all values. We need these values and then we can do now is to work here outside of these functions here. Then we have here of course these arguments are now also our parameters here so we're going to put them in there. So what we're really doing here is we're saying grab these values whatever is in this chart area and the CTX and the context and the skills and transfer this data into our function. So now in here, and what I want to do here, I like to do some additional enters so we don't look too much down. So it's halfway in there, that's more comfortable. And what I want to do is the following. I'm going to say here, well, what we want to do here is to start to draw a gradient effect. So we're going to say a constant gradient, and then we say a gradient background color. And then this will be basically the following. We have here CTX, which is basically the chart. And then in this chart, what I want to do here, I want to say create linear gradient. And then here we need to put in the values, which would be basically, this would be the left. We have here the top, uh, right, and the bottom. And what I want here to do is basically get the values of the chart area. So maybe you're confused regarding the chart area. What is a chart area? I have a specific video for that, which is called understanding the chart area and chart yes, which is absolutely useful to understand because we, with this you can do a lot more because you get a lot more understanding of how chart yes works behind the scene. So that's a very recommended item I would uh, recommend you to watch. And at the very end of the video, I will show you the link as well. It will be shown it will pop up as well. So these are the values, but these values here are right on nothing. So how do we get these values? Chart area, we're going to refer to the chart area here. And basically, if you look here, you can see already here, if you look here, chart area, we get already a few values here. The bottom, we have the height, left, right, top, and width. And basically, the chart area is these four lines here where the chart is being drawn. This is the top, left, right, bottom. 
But in our case, because it's a gradient, I want to have a linear gradient, but I want this to be affected on a horizontal level, meaning I want from Monday to Thursday a color red, and then after that I want this color green. So that's horizontal only, no vertical effect. So we don't need to play around with top and bottom. So I'm going to say a zero and zero, and here we're going to grab the coordinates. To grab these coordinates, all we can do here is just say chart area dot left. And the reason why we are allowed to do this now, because we have these values here, is the uh, object destructuring. Because it's object destructuring, we don't have to say context.chart.chartarea.left.right.top.bottom. No, no need. We're going to say just chart area dot left. So we have this here. This will be chart area. Um, make sure that this is right, spelled correctly with a capital A and then dot right. So we have left and right here because we only want to work with these two here, which the pixels of left would be 27 pixels because that space here, 27 pixels. And then from here, it starts to draw up to the very end in this case, which is on the right side. Um, am I correct? Is that to the very end? Oh, well, not completely. There's some little bit of space here on the right side. Beautiful. All right, so we have this all now, that's fine. So now, what I want to do here is the following. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here now, you're going to draw something. So I'm going to say you get a gradient BG, all right? So that's this specific item. And then we say here dot, we say add color stop. And this is basically a canvas command, same with the upper one here, where we can draw the gradient. And what we're really doing here is basically this. First value here will indicate in percentages between 0 and 1 where do we start because we indicated here the starting point and the ending point but here where again we start are we starting really at the 0% meaning at the very very beginning or we can do 50% or 100% which we at the end but that would not make sense of course but that's for between 0 and 1 so if we would do halfway we should say here maybe 0.5 so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put this zero, comma, and I'm going to grab here a color red. And let's grab this color red here, put it in there. That's the first one. Then the next one is a green color. So I'm going to copy this, put it in here, and then I'll just say here for the sake of it, number one, that means 100% at the very end, it becomes green. But because it's gradient, you will see here now what will happen. So I'm going to grab here the green color, which is the fourth value. There we are. Once we did this, I'm going to enter here, and I'm going to say here, return gradient background. Once I did this, save that. So basically, we're going to run through this function, return that back into here. Save this, refresh, and now there we are. So let me remove this, all right, and then there we are. So all right, so it looks beautiful, this gradient effect, but you can see here, this is basically the effect here now. And what I want is now to get the halfway through. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to show you a trick, and after that, we're going to really calculate this. I just want to demonstrate this first. So I'm going to say here, how do we do an instant transition? So I'm going to grab here, and I just say here, which is the red color. I'll say here, we maintain red color, so I don't want to have a, gra a gradual transition starting at 0% and then fully transitioned at 1%, one, at one, which would mean 100%. No, I want to stay from 0 to 50%, so the entire half of the chart will stay red. And once we did that, at that very moment, I want to have an instant jump here into this green color, as you can see here. So that's why I needed this double here. If I save this now and refresh, you can see here now, there we are, we have this. And if you look at this, you say, oh, hold on, what happened with the line? Don't worry, the line will be next, because right now we have this still for the lines. So now we have this here. So what I want to do next is basically figure out how we calculate this. Well, to understand how we're going to calculate this, we need to understand what is this 1% or 0% to 100%. Well, basically here is, in essence, it's considered the width. And what I mean by the width, it's basically this. If I open up the developer tab, and you can see here the chart area. Do we have it again? Let's go chart area. The width is this one here. And how do we calculate the width? Well, simply, it is the right side minus left. That's basically what we're calculating. So what we're going to do here is basically, well, the width is 
it grabs that number automatically you can see here uh, right is this minus 27 pixels would be approximately this which is correct 9 and then 50 so 59 659 so that's quite accurate so what I want to do now is to figure out then the percentage uh, relationship on this because that would mean that this percentage would be basically the same here would be equal to 100% uh, so if I want to divide by 2 we get 0.5 or 50% so that's basically how we need to calculate that but then we need to calculate in relationship with this so how do we do this all right so what we're going to do here is the following because what I want to do is I want to start not halfway I want to start at this Thursday tick how do we get this Thursday value pixel well luckily for that charges has a built-in structure so what we're going to do in here is this we're going to say here uh, let's get the console law and then all we're going to say here is the scales dot x because let's look at it we are on the x scale we want to grab here index number which one zero one two three this is number three so what i'm going to say here scale dot x and then what i'm going to say here is get the pixel value or basically get pixel for tick and the tick is based on the index numbers number three so once I do this and save that, and let's console, uh, if there's another console log, I want to just hide that, that's this one here. Let's hide that one, save this, refresh. Now we get this specific value. So if I will do this, divide by the uh, chart area dot width, we are getting now basically our value. Let's double check and see that we get in percentage and then we can test this so if i save this here refresh what do we get here we get 0 0.54 point something so i'm going to grab this what i want to do is just to test this to validate if we are on point save that refresh there you are so now you can see here something is happening and apparently it has to do regarding to the left side here so we need to deduct this left side here which is approximately 27 pixels so we're going to do that as well we're going to solve that one so we say here minus so i'm going to put in there minus chart area dot left if i save that let's see what's our number now we get here now that would be 0 0.5 exact well let's test that that is really correct I guess that would be the original state as well. So if I save this, refresh. All right, so that's really accurate. So what we could do is we can try another one here. It's Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday would be one reduced. So if I do that one, save that. We have to grab, of course, the tick here as well. But what I can do here, we can just copy this, soft code this one here. Save that, refresh. All right, we grab this. And then we could even say here the percentage. Let's check this. I want to say a constant percentage equals this. Uh, let's see what's going on here. All right, I forgot that. Make sure you have the parentheses correctly. And then here the percentage will be set on here. Save that. Refresh. There we are. That works beautiful. Now you can see here it starts to work nicely. So now we have this already done. So what I would like to do now is we can just basically remove all of this excess code here. This is here basically the ticks. Let's go put it back on three. Refresh. There we are. We can put it even on four. Let's see if this is really correct. There we are. So this validates. Now let's final item. How do we do the other one? Well, basically we could just copy everything here. Now let's make sure we copy that. Put it here in the border and then there we are. We have this here, we have this comma, that's all fine. If I save this now, refresh, and there we are. So now we have these different colors starting at exactly at the point we want to. And this is basically how you play around with the fill or fillable area of the line chart. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to go really deeper, I would highly recommend you to study this one here. There's a lot more we can do there's truly a lot more and understanding this will give you really a, a big benefit so the link will pop up it's on the screen right now you can just click on it and you will be directed to that